absolutely love this chapter because it's extremely easy when compared to everything else. All right. Now, there are basically two equations in this entire chapter that you have to know, and they are simple. They're algebraic equations. All right. Now, uh, one equation is this right here, and I'm going to combine them for you in just a moment. But one equation is P1V1 equals P2V2. Okay, and this is what it's, your book calls Boyle's Law. Okay, now a way to describe this first off is whenever you see a 1 and a 2, those are initial sets of conditions and final sets of conditions. So in other words, uh, there's two types of problems in this whole entire chapter that can be boiled down to this. The first type is something where something has changed, and the second one is where nothing has changed. Now you see here what we've got is we have a situation where we are at some pressure. Then another situation where the pressure has changed. That's what the 1 and the uh, 2 mean. So, Boyle's Law, if you have a piston, like in a vehicle, okay, it has some volume initially. And there's a pressure inside that thing. Are you with me? Now, as that piston goes down, Okay. What happens to the volume? Now stop that. Look at this. What happens to the volume of the container? Does it? It decreases. All right. So as the piston compresses, the volume goes down. Now what happens to the pressure? It goes up. Does everybody see that? Well, that's what they call Boyle's law. See, I told you it was easy. It's just that simple, right? This law is what is called inversely proportional. Now, before I go any further, the unit of pressure is the only one we've not talked about in chapter 2. Okay? Now, what pressure is, is it something that is a force per unit area. Okay? So, in the United States, we use a pound per square inch. That, you know, like an area is length times width, so that's like an inch times an inch inch squared. So this is the amount of pound force per square inch. And of course, like if you um, get inside of a normal automobile's tires, what's the pressure? I mean, of a typical set of tires, like 35 pounds per square inch, right? And of course, this is the same thing as PSI. Now, like in my bike, uh, 120 is what I run, 120 PSI, right? In my truck, I think it's 65 or 70. So it depends on what type of tires and so forth like that you've got, but pounds per square inch is the way we talk about in the United States. Now there's another one we talk about here in the United States, and that is something that is called an inches of mercury, okay? So the, the weather lady may tell you that it's 30.1 inches of mercury outside and the barometric pressure is rising, or 30.1 and the barometric pressure is falling. Now, of course, for weather, that generally means as the pressure goes down, uh, that is kind of an indication of poor weather's on the way. And as pressure goes up, that's kind of an indication that, you know, warm area and whatever's on the way, all right? Now, so that's uh, what they use here is what's called an inches of mercury. Are we clear? All right. Now, in Jacksonville, Florida, we are nominally at one atmosphere of pressure. All right. Now, what do I mean by nominally? I mean that that's what it's about. You see, pressure changes all the time. Right now, it's raining outside. So it is not exactly one atmosphere of pressure. It may be 0 0.998. It may be 0 0.983. Who knows what the pressure is until you measure it. But we call it nominally at one atmosphere at sea level in places like Jacksonville, Florida. Now that's the same thing as 760 millimeters of mercury. All right. <clears throat> and that is the same thing as 760 tor named after an Italian scientist named Torricelli. All right. So those are the big three that you have to memorize. Now in your book, on page 
269, they list others. Others that are less common. Things like centimeters of mercury, millibar, uh, all this type of thing. Okay, kilopascals, pascals. But in here, these are the three that you have to memorize for a test. Now, where have you saw millimeters of mercury? That is the unit like that your blood pressure is measured in. Okay, 135 over 85 or whatever. That is in millimeters of mercury is how that's measured. Now, where do these things like millimeters of mercury and inches of mercury come from? Well, they come back in the days when they had these um, YouTube manometers. Okay, closed at what, huh? YouTube. It looks like a U. And it's oh. Oh, you too. I get it. <laughs> I'm up here concentrating, and now you're talking about YouTube. All right. So, so anyway, so here we go. This thing's got mercury in it, okay? And then there's a ruler over here. This is closed at one end and open at one end. So as the barometric pressure increases, what happens to that mark right there? It rises. And then you can measure that with a ruler. Okay. So that's where millimeters of mercury, that's where inches of mercury, there's, there's inches of water and millimeters of water. Same deal, closed use tube thing, pushing down on water, right? Because water and mercury have different compression ratios and all of this drama. All right, how are we doing with pressure? Good or bad? Um, what is the yes. YouTube thing? Wouldn't it matter what pressure it was initially filled at? Isn't it only a TV from? Oh, wow. I really don't know. I don't know. I don't know if it would equalize or not. I don't know. Any other questions? I mean, sometimes that happens, right? But I'm going to sit here and lie to you. I have no clue. All right. <clears throat> I wouldn't think that it would matter or else they would not have it as a, like a standard. You know what I mean? Uh and probably, I mean, I'm going to guess on this one, but probably the reason it wouldn't matter is because this pressure here does not change remarkably. Does that make sense? Now, what if you was to build an apparatus and fill this thing inside of a vacuum? You know what I mean? Like a drastic change? That may matter. Or if you was to build an apparatus and have a huge pressure on it and fill it and then take it out of the apparatus... You know, when there's like extreme pressure change differences, that may matter. I don't know. All right. Okay. We're doing good with this. All right. So, of course, there's going to be a converting thing that we're going to have to go through. So, that's the first thing is Boyle's Law. Now, there's another law out there that involves pressure, and that is as follows. It is P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. All right. Again, we have an initial set of conditions that symbolized by the one, and then there's a final set of conditions that's symbolized by the two. Now, just a, a quick way to look at this is if you was to take a can of peas in a can, sealed up in the metal, okay, set that on top of a stove eye, and then heat it up. What's going to happen? Well. The first thing that's going to happen is what? You're going to have an initial pressure and an initial temperature before the heat's applied. And then after the heat's applied, all right, you're going to have a final pressure and a final temperature. First off, how's the temperature going to change? Is it going to go up or go down? Up, right? So increase temperature. How's the pressure going to change? Is it going to go up or down? It's going to go up. So these things here are what are called directly proportional. See, take a note. This is inversely proportional here. This is directly proportional, which means they both increase at the same amount, right? So if you did this eventually, what would happen is the pressure would get so great that the uh, aluminum can or whatever would burst all over the kitchen, right? Okay, now temperature. Now, what unit of pressure do you use? That's, that's a cute question that no one asks, right? What unit of pressure do you use? The answer is it don't matter. But they have to be consistent. 
All right. So if this is in millimeters of mercury, so does this have to be. If this is